Welcome back. Well, now to the battle between the village of Freeport and New York State's Department of Transportation over a highway truck yard. Freeport officials have asked a judge to evict the highway department from the yard, saying it's littered with debris. Village officials claim they own the land where they want a developer to build hundreds of rental apartments on the property, but first they want the state to clean it up. Remove the street sweepings, the old tires, the dumpsters, garbage, and shopping carts and the contaminated waste. A nearby wetlands border the property. The state says it would cost millions to move elsewhere and that the yard is needed so that highway work crews can respond quickly to major storms. They hear us now to explain this debate a little bit further and why he feels the way he does. It's Mayor Robert Kennedy from the Village of Freeport. Welcome to the show, Mayor. Good morning. Glad to be here. Thank you. First off, anything new? I know there was some court action uh, just a day ago. I believe the judge uh, granted a, a uh, delay on hearing the case at the, at the request of New York State. So it's been put off? Yes. All right, let's talk about the ownership issue because that alone seems to be a major controversy. Uh, in a lengthy uh, response to me, the uh, spokeswoman for the State Department of Transportation, a woman named Jennifer Post, says the yard has long been acknowledged uh, to be used as a highway yard, saying they have an easement going back to the 1920s, saying that they have these acknowledgments, uh, first from New York City way back then and from uh, the Long Island State Parks Commission. Uh, uh, do they have a case there? Well, at this point, there's been no easement produced. Secondly, we believe that if there was an easement, that it would have been extinguished in the late 60s due to some new laws that came into effect. And, and finally, if there was an easement and it wasn't extinguished, we believe that they're in the wrong location that was discussed. But you say the 60s. We're talking, oh, I'm sorry, 50 years later. Has this all come about now because a developer wants to build there? Well, they have been using the site, and, and they've been doing a great job with this, no removal and, and highway maintenance. We just feel that the benefits, the economic benefits to the village of Freeport, especially post-Sandy, post-Irene, uh, the damage that we incurred, we incurred uh, 3,500 homes that were flooded by salt water. We have 500 homes that are still vacant. We need the economic development. There's an opportunity now that we could, we could put together about 275 units there. We could generate five, uh, 500 to a million dollars a year in additional tax revenue. You. And you're talking about four and a half million, five million dollars in sales tax just for the construction. Yeah, and you've talked about how this could help the village stay under another state mandate, the property tax cap. Pro property tax state mandates you stay under two percent, and to combine services with other municipalities. It's simple that we're asking that the the governor combine this small substation with a station that's less than two miles away in Merrick, right off the Meadowbrook Parkway. Uh, the State Department of Transportation says, first of all, they say the yard is valued at six million dollars so that the taxpayers have an investment in it that they should get something back for and if they had to clean it up it would cost them eight million dollars to do that if they had to tear things down and move elsewhere and that would come at the taxpayers expense well first of all if, if, it, if there is an easement which we don't believe there is you're not allowed to fence off the area it's not an exclusive easement if they were to have one you're not allowed to have permanent buildings and fences you can't restrict people from using the property that you have an easement for that's number one number two the, the benefit Benefits outweigh the inconvenience of driving two miles. Not to mention, there's another yard in America. There's another one, less much, than two miles. Much away. bigger yard. Yes, uh, but they, you know, that's part of their answer is that they say, well, those two miles make a difference when you have a big storm or a big snowstorm. You know, our trucks could take hours to go those two miles when they're needed right where they are, right off uh, of the Meadowbrook. It can't take hours to go two miles, less than two miles. <laughs> We're talking about three or four minutes, and I agree it might be a little bit of inconvenience, but again, the, the necessity of the village economics uh, outweighs the two minutes in transportation. Yeah, so that's why you're committed to fighting this. You know, there were some environmentalists at that event that we showed video of, and they talked about in the past they claimed that there were issues with uh, debris that was spilling over into the nearby wetlands, and that they got that cleaned up, and now this has occurred. Um, you know, first of all, how does that stuff get there? Uh, and secondly, if it is a concern for the groundwater, would there be concern for any residents living in rental units? Well, what's, it's not necessarily the groundwater. What's happening is there's streams that go through that area and empty into the bay. And what they're doing, the De Department of Transportation, is actually taking street sweepings and piling it up on that property, which will eventually end up into the bays in the ocean. Why would they put it there? 
they're storing it. I, I don't know, but there's blacktop, there's cement, there's street sweepings, a lot of debris there that, that really shouldn't be there. That should be going to some place where they get rid of construction materials. Yes, absolutely. So what's the next step in this fight? Well, we're going to go to court, and uh, we're going to wait to see. Uh, my understanding is that, that they are unable to find an easement for this property, and we'd like to work with them. I, I'm sure the developer would help contribute to helping them relocate and not have a financial burden to deal with, burden to deal with it. All right, so possibly picking up some of the courts. Sure. Freeport Mayor Robert Kennedy, thanks for stopping in and talking with us about this today. There'll be more to come, I'm sure. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you having me here.